Hope you're having a good day today. Appreciate you joining me. We're going to be looking at the account of the healing of the lepers today. Our hymn, it's the hymn where the gates swing outward never. Just a few more days to be filled with praise and to tell the old, old story. Then when twilight falls and my Savior calls, I shall go to him in glory. I'll exchange my cross for a shining crown where the gates swing outward never. At his feet I'll lay every burden down and with Jesus live forever. Let's look at our passage in Luke 17 at verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down at his face, fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. What points might we make? The first one, to look in verse, tw in verse 12, you have ten men who are lepers. And we know at least one of them is a Samaritan. And sin puts everyone in the same camp. To think about the, the idea, and what I mean by that is, you know, usually the Jews had nothing to do with Samaritans. But, you know, when you're dying, um, they, they were together. They were together as they were dying. And sometimes when we, you know, to look at that situation, can you imagine it's like, well, you know, the, the nine, if it was nine lepers, if there was only one who was a Samaritan, if the nine lepers said, well, yeah, we're dying, but at least we're not a Samaritan. And sometimes folks will, they'll, they'll be caught up in, in um, false religion. And people will say, well, at least they're going somewhere. Well, at, at least this, at least that. And it's like, if they're in sin, they're in sin. Sin puts everybody in the same camp. Back to our passage. The obvious point is very simple. One fell down, giving him thanks. What's one of the earliest lessons we teach our children? Give thanks. That's why we worship the Lord. It's part of the reason we worship the Lord. We want to say thank you. And so here, this individual, when he saw he was cleansed from his leprosy, he came back to show his gratitude. And he gave thanks. But of course, you have the nine who did not. And the question is, why did they not give thanks? I think it's easy to make excuses for them. They were doing what the Lord told them to do. I've heard people make that excuse. But the Lord, the Lord rebukes. And he, or at least there is a rebuke in what he says. Where are the nine? And why didn't they? Can you think about the Jews' mentality? And you might think about entitlement. Why does, why does someone not say thank you? It's because they feel entitled. They feel they deserve it. And it's sad that these individuals did not come back to say thank you, isn't it? The one did. And the nine should have. But the one fella did. Gave God the glory. And that's what we should do as well. Even though other people may not say thank you, we should, we should give the Lord thanks for all the Lord has done. Appreciate you. Hope you have a good day. Join us tomorrow for another portion of our daily praise.